good day everybody and welcome to another video. Now today I thought it would be interesting for me to present the results of my genetic ancestry testing uh, that I've completed over the years and to compare the results from the different companies side by side. Now I've tested with Ancestry, FTDNA, MyHeritage, 23andMe, Living DNA and my true ancestry um, and I think that with the exception of 23andMe and my true ancestry for each service it was a fresh DNA sample um, it wasn't the case where I was transferring my data from one service to another and I believe for my heritage um, we also did a test for my sister so we can look at those results as well <clears throat> now I sometimes see online that people are quite sceptical about ancestry, um, genetic ancestry testing. And I think where that scepticism comes from stems from the fact that people are maybe too optimistic about the accuracy that these services can provide. And um, I think perhaps to a certain extent, people don't understand exactly what their results are showing them. And what I mean by that is, so I know that most of my ancestry on paper comes from uh, the British Isles. And I am sure that whatever testing service I use, it's going to be very difficult for them to, with fine detail, differentiate, for example, from English DNA from Welsh DNA, for example. Especially because many of my family used to live on the border between these two countries. Or even to differentiate between English DNA and Irish DNA because historically we come from the same parent groups of populations, right? The um, Balbicas. And because of the dispersal of the Balbicas and the, and the Celtic languages and things like that in the Bronze Age period, it's also highly likely that my genetic ancestry markers are gonna show great resemblance to uh, modern day French people, modern day Spanish people, modern day Scandinavians, because this, again, we all descend from the same um, parent populations. The, um, uh, the um, original hunter-gatherers that were living in Europe, the farming invaders that came from the Middle East, and the steppe invaders uh, bringing the Indo-European languages with them. So I'm, I'm sure that the, what we're going to see with these results is a mixture of um, Northwestern European DNA and probably there's going to be some difference in the percentages um, simply because the services are not that fine-tuned to be able to differentiate you know on, a, on an accurate level Welsh DNA from English DNA from Northern French DNA from uh, Scottish DNA and things like this but that's just my um, my assumption I'm not sure I've never actually compared my ancestry results side by side. Uh, so let's see what we can discover. So here's the first one on the screen now. This is actually my old Ancestry DNA uh, results because Ancestry update their algorithm every year, which means that even though your DNA doesn't change, obviously, the way that they interpret your DNA will change. I can say that I've had my DNA on Ancestry for about six years and that hasn't been any radical changes. Usually all that happens is these smaller percentages here are changing amongst themselves. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, we've got 82% England and Northwestern Europe. Northwestern Europe is a catch-all adjective there, I think. Uh, Wales, 5%, Scotland, 5%, Ireland, 4%, Norway, 3%, and Basque, 1%. Does that surprise me? Not really. Let me tell you what I know from my paper trail. My the maternal side of my family is from Wales, but they're not ethnically Welsh. When I um, looked into their family history, a lot of their a lot of my family members grew up on the English side of the English and Wales border. Uh, with you know some people being born on the Welsh side, I suspect it's going to be when we look at my maternal side. There's going to be inf influence mainly from England with a little bit of uh, Welsh influence in there as well. Uh, my um, family surnames on my maternal side are more English than they are Welsh. 
Um, but, um, you know, don't get me wrong, my um, uh, grandparents take their uh, Welshness very seriously. My grandfather even represented Wales in a sporting discipline. Um, on my paternal side, again, it's mainly like English um, from the central regions of England. If we get go back to great, great grandparents, that uh, type of level, I've got um, one Irish lineage and one Scottish lineage. So I'm expecting or would be expecting some influence from that. And, you know, to be honest, these results look as I would expect it. I would maybe have wanted or, or thought that the Welsh influence would be slightly higher. Um, you know, it isn't. Uh, this Basque, again, I, I, I always think that when Basque appears in um, British people's results that it's connected to population movements from a long, 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 long time ago from the Iberian Peninsula, um, you know, perhaps with the spread of Celtic language and culture. Uh, Norway, again, it's not surprising. I don't have any um, direct Norwegian connections, but I know my Hapler group is a Hapler group, which is commonly found, my paternal Hapler group is um, I1, and that's commonly found in Scandinavia. So again, that's not too surprising. So yeah, but they updated it. Uh, this The next slide should be this year's. And it hasn't changed much. That Basque 1%, which might have been, um, you know, some distortion in the algorithms disappeared. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it reappeared whenever they update these results. England, Northwestern Europe, again, Northwestern Europe, this catch all adjective, 80%, um, unsurprising. Wales, 8%, Ireland, 6%, Norway, 3%, Scotland, 3%. Yeah, so that Welsh percentage is perhaps where I would expect it to be, knowing my. Uh, Welsh lineages. Um, when you click on these in Ancestry, they will actually give you a range, uh, a mathematical range where your, um, in terms of the percentage where it, you know, mathematically could lie, they actually present you with the statistically most likely um, distribution of your Ancestry percentages. But you know, if you clicked on Wales, it would probably say something like it could theoretically be a maximum of 15%, and a theoretical minimum of 3% or something like that. And this one, it will be England and Northwestern Europe. It will be something between 60 and 90, 60 and 95 or something like that. Moving on, what have we got next? So this is FTDNA. I cut it out awkwardly just so I didn't dox myself. Um, England, Wales and Scotland. So here, FTDNA are not even confident enough to be able to differentiate these three population groups. 85%, Ireland 5%. Yeah, maybe a bit higher than I would expect. Central Europe, less than 1%. But if we look on the map, that Central Europe includes parts of England anyway. Um, and uh, definitely includes parts of Europe where uh, if we're talking about population movements, historic population movements, uh, my DNA would have come from. And again, we've got this Iberian Peninsula, uh, which is a surprise in the sense that, you know, I don't have any Spanish ancestors that I'm aware of or anything like that. But again... Um, I think there is a, a working theory that Celtic languages spread actually to the United Kingdom via the sea lanes of the um, Atlantic coast. Um, and, you know, the population movement that brought Celtic language or Belbica customs to the British Isles uh, will have brought with it some DNA as well. Moving on, um, here we have my heritage. And again, wow, this Iberian, you know, maybe I should start looking into that in a bit more detail. Maybe I do have a Spanish great, great grandparent somewhere. Um, again, I still still suspect this is uh, just background noise because of historical populations. I'd actually be interested if anybody listening who has similar mainly British ancestry to me also picks up these this uh, Iberian um you know, this kind of like Iberian tendency in their DNA results. English has dropped well down to about 50%, which completely doesn't agree with what I, I know on my uh, paper trail and in fact comparison with other ancestry testing services. Irish, Scottish and, and Welsh up to 22%. I guess if we looked at those other results from ancestry, a combination of all those percentages, 
could theoretically approach 20%. I think the next slide is going to be my sister's results from this, from the same company. Wow, yeah, that is radically different. Um, big Celtic influence there, big Scandinavian influence. That could be being misinterpreted as English because obviously, you know, the English population, the backbone of the English population were the Anglo-Saxon invaders and the Anglo-Saxons would have come from like this very southernmost part of this blue, um, this uh, blue outline that we have here. Italian, no idea what that is. You know, maybe it's uh, miss picking up the Basque that we see in other results. 1% West Asian, it's very small percentage. It's not in any of the other results. I don't have any known connection with that region. Although I do have a theory that sometimes the second languages that people are interested in studying are somehow like, you, you know, connected to their genetic ancestry. So my logic would be if you find like an overriding urge to learn Japanese, maybe somewhere in your genetic history, you have a Japanese ancestor. I'm really big on learning Hittite language, which came from Anatolia. So yeah, maybe there's something there. Maybe that 1% is, is uh, somehow uh, impressing on me. Uh, but no, these, um, obviously these are my sister's results. So my sister has, um, you know, uh, this, 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 we have the same parents, obviously the same mother and father, but we don't have the same DNA, right? I have 50% uh, for my mother, 50% of my father, and my sister could have different 50 percentage, those different 50 percent segments. Um, of course, there's going to be big overlap, but this is radically different from what I uh, would be expecting, to be honest. Uh, so not particularly impressed with my heritage so far. Moving on, this is 23andMe, and this is back more like it, right? Um, European, 99.5%, yep, we know that. And the breakdown, British and Irish, 94.9%, so it looks like 23andMe isn't confident to differentiate those two population groups. French and German, 3.1%. Again, this could be distortion or, or picking up signals from uh, British and Irish DNA because these population groups are um, heavily connected. The same with the Scandinavian. Broadly, Northwestern European, frankly, could be anything. Um, doesn't really tell us much. This half a percentage from Sudan, I would guess that's just distortion uh, in the algorithm. I don't think it's picking up anything that is legitimately there. So that's where I think you do have to be careful with interpreting your ancestry results. Just because it picks up this 0.5%, that, that means the algorithm has interpreted your DNA data as this being statistically the most likely breakdown. Um, now, it you know, doesn't necessarily mean it's factually true. I don't think people should be going um, and, you know, necessarily making radical changes to their life, beginning to, uh, you know, um, appropriate culturally things from Sudan or things like that just because of this 0.5% or learning uh, the language of the country or anything like that on that basis. I mean, of course, you're entitled to do what you want, but um, I, I would uh, be a bit sceptical about such low percentages. This is from Living DNA, I believe the service is called. Um, this is really ambitious, tries to break down Great Britain and Ireland into many smaller segments. This Irish percentage of 7.7% .7 is comparable to the results I've got for other services. Um, does it make sense? Central England is where most of my paper trail goes. South East England, not really. South Wales border, yes. North Wales, yes. There seems to be some relationship between my paper trail and what is being presented here. Um, we have Northwest Germanic at the bottom. I guess that's just um, a generic term for, you know, collectively Northwest Germanic populations not being able to differentiate it into a specific group or differentiate it from Great Britain and Ireland. Nothing really surprising there. Um, in fact, to be honest, if, if that was the only ancestry test I'd done, I'd be a little bit disappointed in the results because that's pretty much what I know from my paper trail. Um, yeah, but th those percentages look 
okay, but not 100% accurate. And then moving on, finally, this one's like a little bit of fun, I think. Uh, some people take this way too seriously. My true ancestry, uh, you upload your DNA from a uh, different service and they run their own algorithm and they try to um, use that algorithm to differentiate your DNA into historical population groups. And that's what we've got here. The blues represent, uh, you know, kind of like Germanic uh, population groups from antiquity and the greens represent varieties of, of Celtic population groups. That pretty much is what I would expect for anybody from the United Kingdom, to be honest, a general mixture of, of Germanic and Celtic population groups, uh, Viking in there as well. Um, am I surprised because most of my ancestry comes from England, you know, a Germanic country, Germanic speaking country, that these blues are not higher, you know, don't take up more of my um, ancestry breakdown. Uh, not really, because, you know, Anglo-Saxons migrated into uh, a country that was already populated with uh, Celtic peoples. I come from a border region as well. Most of my family comes from a border region with a Celtic population. So, you know, this actually looks quite good. I could imagine it being broken down like this. Equally, if these colours were reversed, it also wouldn't be a surprise for me. Um, I'm not sure any algorithm can accurately differentiate these two population groups because we have to remember that Germanic and Celtic uh, DNA uh, is ultimately our, comes from the same three master population groups anyway, the hunter-gatherers, the farmers and the steppe invaders that we spoke about before. So there we go, that's my um, ancestry comparison done. Um, huge similarities between most services, I guess the, the, the biggest irregularity was my heritage, both for me and my sister. Uh, but the other services seem to be comparable. And um, yeah, I would recommend it. I think, uh, you know, these tests have come down in price. Do a few tests, get a few different results. Um, combine it with what you what you know uh, from, you know, what your family have told you, what you know from researching your own paper trail. You know, very often there will be differences between these three pieces of evidence, right? Uh, it's um, We need to draw on all three and come up with our best conclusions where our ancestry lies. Let me know in the comments if you've done one of these tests and you've got a surprising result. I guess the only potential surprising result for me is that Basque influence that seems to be more prevalent in some uh, ancestry testing services than others. I suspect it's just a background signal from historical population movements, but maybe it's not. Maybe there is something there. It's worth keeping an eye on and, and, and worth researching. I've looked into my um, you know, paper trail quite extensively and I haven't found anything there. Although everybody has one or two dead ends and it could well be that that dead end ultimately, uh, there's an interesting story there and I've got some Spanish or Portuguese connection uh, uh, in me. Of course, you know, had the Napoleonic Wars, historically Portugal and England have uh, held alliances together. It's not unfeasible that there wouldn't be some form of, of uh, a genetic exchange there in my uh, family history. That's it for me. Um, I will be back soon with another Hittite language video. Thank you for spending some time with me this afternoon and I look forward to speaking to everybody again soon.